Hey everyone, I'm Chris Perella, and welcome to a new episode of Getting to Know Toolbag 3. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at custom shaders. Toolbag uses a modular shader system where materials are made up of predefined slots, and those values are stored in an intermediary structure. Some of those slots are represented in the properties panel of a material, like the surface, microsurface, albedo, and reflectivity slots. Custom shaders can be used to extend or replace any of those slots. To load a custom shader, scroll to the bottom of the Properties panel, and then under Extra, select Custom. You can then load the available shaders by pressing the triangle. You can see here that Toolbank 3 ships with two example shaders. To unload a custom shader, just hit the X. Custom shaders are located in the Program Files under Marmoset, Toolbank 3, Data, Shader, Mat and then in the custom folder. Any shaders placed in this folder will appear in the dropdown. Okay, let's take a look at the workflow by creating a simple shader that overrides the albedo slot of our material with a flat color. For authoring custom shaders, I like to use the text editor Sublime 3. Toolbag shaders are a union of HLSL and GLSL syntax conventions, so I'm going to set my syntax highlighter to OpenGL. I have opened the shader folder already, and you can find the example shaders here under custom. Okay, let's write our first shader. The first thing that we need to access is the intermediary structure I mentioned earlier. So let's include the state fragment shader. Now that we have access to the stored variables in the material, we can write a new function to override the albedo variable with a custom one. You can check out state.frag for all the available variables stored in the structure that makes up a marmoset material. In our new custom shader, let's create a void function and pass in the structure named fragment state. We'll call our new function custom albedo. We'll use the in-out modifier so that we can read and write back into the structure from within our function. And let's pass in fragment state as s. Next, let's create a new vector3 variable and call it color. And let's go ahead and give it a yellow tint. Then let's store the results into the albedo parameter of the fragment state. The albedo parameter is a vector 4. So let's use our new RGB color variable and use the existing alpha component of the albedo parameter. Then outside the function, let's check to see if there's an existing albedo subroutine if so, we'll undefine it and use our new one instead. This code replaces the albedo module and then loads our new one. Let's save the file in the custom folder. And back in Toolbag, let's load our custom shader. For the new shader to appear under the dropdown, you may need to set the extra slot to None, and then back to Custom. Let's create a sphere to apply our custom shader to using the new Generate Primitives Python plugin. Now if we hit the triangle, our new custom albedo shader should show up. If we click it, the existing albedo slot will be unloaded and replaced with our custom one. Unless, of course, there's something wrong with our code. To bring up the debug console, press Ctrl tilde. It looks like we accidentally typed something wrong. So let's go back to our shader. 
and fix our typo. Now if we save the file and reload the shader and tool bag by pressing the icon here or Control shift c on the keyboard. We can expose variables to the UI by defining a uniform variable and then some custom marmoset code back in the shader. Let's add a new vector3 variable. and call it uColor. Then let's replace the hard-coded color variable with our new one. We can comment out the old code, save that, and back in Toolbank let's reload. You can see that uColor now appears as three sliders, one for each of the components. By adding some custom marmoset syntax, we can style the parameter in the UI. If two forward slashes and the keyword color are added to the variables line, we can set the vector3 to be a color widget. Let's save and reload. And you can see we now have a color widget. We can also add a custom display name for our variables using keyword name. I'm going to go ahead and call this albedo. I'm going to save the file and reload it in toolbag and uColor should change to albedo. We can also set default values for our shaders using the keyword default. I'm going to set my color variable to default to blue. I'm going to save that, and then in toolbag, I'm going to unload the shader and reload it. There's also a command for min and max on sliders, so let's create a test float. Add two forward slashes and then use the keyword min, and I'm going to set that to 0, and the keyword max, and I'm going to set that to 100. And now I've got a test slider that goes from 0 to 100. Finally, integers can be represented with either a checkbox or a slider. Let's convert our test variable to an integer, and then use the keyword bool to have it show up as a checkbox. Custom shaders in Toolbag are quite extendable. You can create shaders that affect one or multiple components of a marmoset material. Here I've created a shader that uses an RGBA texture to mask areas of the emissive. Let's take a quick look at the shader. Here, I define a texture variable and a speed variable. I then create my new function and call the existing emissive function. Next, I create a time variable using the uCustomTime found in custom extras. And then I do some quick math to the time variable so that it comes out as a 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0.75 value. Next, I bind my texture. Then I set the mask to be visible based on that time variable. Then I add them all up together and multiply that by the emissive light so that at 0.25, the red channel of my mask map will be visible. Then at 0.5, the green channel of my mask will be visible. At 0.75, the blue. And then at zero, the alpha. I then store that back into our fragment state structure in the emissive light variable. Custom domain shaders can also be written. Here I've written one to animate the vertex position of a mesh for a vegetation shader. That covers it for this video on custom shaders. Be sure to check out the Marmoset website for more tutorials, plugins, add-ons, and products.